nerve injuries of the pelvis and the hip. The superior gluteal nerve supplies the abductor muscle, and if the nerve or the muscle are injured, you get something called Tenderberg gait. It's an abnormal gait. When you try to repair the abductor muscle and you cannot repair it, it is not possible to repair it, then you transfer the gluteus maximus muscle. The gluteus maximus is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve. And here is the piriformis muscle separating the superior from the inferior gluteal nerve. The superior gluteal nerve comes from L5 nerve root. The L5 nerve root can be affected by an ipsilateral posterolateral disc herniation of L4, L5, or a far lateral disc herniation at L5, S1. Here you can see that the tendon break gait can result from injury to L5 nerve root. The L5 nerve root can also give us weakness of the big toe extension and decreased sensation on the top of the foot, and that is called the superficial perineal nerve area. If the patient has a posterior hip pain, make sure the hip pain is not coming from the sacroiliac joint or the lower spine conditions. When we examine a patient with lumbar stenosis, we don't find a lot of neurologic findings, but we must examine the peripheral pulses to differentiate neurogenic from vascular claudication. Pariformis syndrome will give us posterior hip pain due to irritation of the sciatic nerve. The treatment is usually conservative with therapy, stretching, anti-inflammatory medication, injections, surgery at the last resort. This is the area for injection in the buttock. Here is the ideal site for injection in the buttock area. And here is the ideal site for injection in the thigh area. The sciatic nerve comes from L4 to S3. Sciatica is a clinical diagnosis. The patient will complain of sharp shooting pain, like an electric shock that radiates to the leg and the foot. There may be tingling and numbness. And sitting aggravates the condition because it stretches the nerve. The sciatic nerve has two parts, the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve. The common perineal nerve is the one that gets injured the most, and the patient will get foot drop from this injury. The foot drop can occur due to common perineal nerve injury at any point of its course. It can occur from pelvic fracture, lumbosacral plexus injury. It can occur from a hip dislocation. Posterior dislocation of the hip can cause sciatic nerve palsy. You must examine the neurovascular status of the patient. You must reduce the hip early. Close reduction should be done in less than six hours to relieve the pressure on the nerve and to avoid a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. 
the Smith Peterson approach, you will go between the tensor fascia lata, the superior gluteal nerve, and the sartorius, the femoral nerve. Here is the interval between the two muscles that represent two nerves. Moralgia peritetica, that is burning sensation felt over the anterolateral aspect of the thigh due to compression of the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. And here is the anatomy of the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. You can see the nerve very close to the Smith-Peterson approach between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata. And this is the area of loss or decreased sensation on the lateral thigh. These are the nerve roots of the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, L2, L3. And here is the femoral nerve. It comes from L2, L3, L4. Here are the branches of the femoral nerve. You can see the saphenous nerve is the longest branch of the femoral nerve. When the femoral nerve is affected, the quadriceps muscle will be weak and the patient will not be able to straighten the knee. Sacral fracture can give us a lot of neurological deficit. Which type of sacral fracture had the most neurological deficit? It got to be the one going through the sacral canal. If the fracture goes through the ala, you get an L5 nerve root in about 5% of the time. If the fracture goes through the sacral foramen, you get Sacral nerve root involvement in about 20 to 30 percent of the time. And if the fracture goes through the sacral canal, the patient may get coda equina with multiple nerve roots involvement with bladder and bowel dysfunction. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.